in this lesson, we're going to be talking about the additional runway information. A chart that's mostly overlooked, but in this particular section, we're going to actually learn how to read it, what the information tells us, and how is it useful for us. If you've not yet done so, click over here with our other videos where we actually looked at most of the airport chart already. The heading section is what we covered previously, so we're not going to go into that, but let's go be just below that and you could see general notes. In this particular case in Orlando, the general notes basically say there's birds and deer in the vicinity of the airport, there's actually terminal Doppler weather radar there, there's low level wind shear learning systems, and the list goes on and on. It's a very nice thing to have at certain airports. Now, smaller airports may not have this kind of data, and this kind of data might be actually embedded on the bottom of a plan view chart, depending on the size of the airport. So number one, it's actually the runway information. Let's go ahead and pull that up. Okay, you can see the runways are depicted on the upper left-hand corner, and the runways are basically separated by a solid line there. In this case, we have runway 17 right and 35 left. Number two gives us the approach lighting systems and what it has. Let's take a look at that chart now. On this particular runway, there's high intensity runway lighting or hurls, center line lighting. We have approach lighting with sequenced flashing lights. And basically that number two indicates there's two red side lights. There's a poppy on the runway, which helps with obviously visual glide slope about three degrees. As you can see, number three, it says grooved, which helps us. A grooved runway is really nice. It can help wick some of the moisture away. Um, it helps with stopping too. Finally, number four says RVR, which indicates there's runway visual range equipment next to the runways. So let's go ahead and jump to Fort Lauderdale's 10 left and check out that runway. Okay, number five tells us if there was a threshold on the runway, the actual distance from the end of that threshold to the end of the runway, because you can't land on a displaced threshold. So it's good to know the distance that that threshold is, and it would be listed in this section. Number six is very important. It's the distance from the localizer transmitter to the end of the runway. And this is very important for heavy metal drivers. No, I'm not talking about Metallica. I'm actually talking about folks that fly airliner type jets. GA type aircraft, really not too much concerned with this number. However, if you're a heavy metal driver, you'll wanna pay attention to this next section. All right, to make this a little more interesting, we're gonna pull up the runway eight out of Burbank. And you can see this airport has been victims of many airplanes going off the end of it. So let's take a look at why that happens. If you look, the landing beyond threshold is 4,575 feet. That means if you fly a perfect three degree glide slope and you land perfectly, you'll have about 4,500 feet to stop the aircraft. I forgot to mention, who does that? And first of all, that doesn't take into consideration a flare to arrest your descent rate and actual bleed off speed as well. That's called air distance. That's not factored in here, folks. So if you're flying a perfect three degree glide slope and you don't flare and you smash the airplane on the runway enough where the gears are going through the wings and it compresses your passengers about two inches, that would be 4,500 feet of runway to stop. That's not real and that's not realistic. You have to take in consideration the actual air distance of flaring and bleeding off some speed. I'm not talking about floating. You're gonna actually have to do a chop and drop at this runway. And what I mean by that is when you hit the 10 feet, you pull the power back and you slam the thing on the ground. But it's going to be after the touchdown point, especially if you're flying an ILS approach. Take into consideration an HGS approach, which is a heads up guidance system, and you're gonna be another thousand feet down the runway. So make sure you factor that distance in. You folks remember the word lasso that we used? Yeah, land and hold short. And that distance is gonna be given on this one in number seven. And basically that's the distance between the end of the runway to the lasso point where you gotta stop your aircraft. 
So let's take a look at number eight. If there's a physical distance restriction on the runway for takeoff, it's gonna be listed in this section. Okay, number nine is the actual physical width of the runway. In this particular case in Orlando, it's nice and generous. It's 150 feet. Okay, so let's look at number 10 here. You can see in number 10, there's a lot of runways listed in numerical order. That helps us, again, all those runways are gonna be listed in this section. Number 11 tells us the actual notes if there is notes on the applicable runways. So let's take a look at that. They're actually numbered, so it really helps us. So let's take a look at number one here. The runway is unlit from 0400 Zulu to 11 Zulu. Look at number two. The angle is three degrees, and it just goes on and on and on if there's a lot of numbers there. So take a look at those notes because that does help us a lot to see exactly what's going on with the runway. We certainly hope you enjoyed this lesson and we hope you got something out of this lesson. I would love to hear your thoughts on the additional runway information, specifically in that landing section where we talked about before with the flare and the air distance carried. I want to know if that's new to you, if, you, if that's something you just learned. I want to know if you use it all the time or if you're going to use it all the time. Anyway, my name is Jason from Navigraph. We definitely hope you enjoyed this lesson. Plus, we hope you enjoyed this series. And if you haven't yet done so, please check out our services and products over at Navigraph.com. Again, we offer, I think, the best charting services in the community.